everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello. And awesome brony reviewer Silver Quill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who apparently hasn't recovered from his head injury after getting run over by Shining Harmor. Um, <laughs> what? Did I hear you right? Shining Hammer? Shining Harmor. Oh. <laughs> and uh, as you may have guessed, uh, we are going to be reviewing issue number 13 of the Friends Forever series, uh, published by IDW. Starring Rarity, uh, also known as Best Pony, because Best Pony is Best Pony is Best Pony, and Bab Seed, uh, written by Jeremy Whitley, with art by Agnes Garbowska, and colors by Lauren Perry. You know what? I think we cannot talk about this comic w- without talking about our first, uh, our thoughts on it. I mean, uh, this is, this is, Quite an interesting couple that we have right here. Like, what do Babs and Rarity have in common? Like, this is so out there and kind of uh, bizarre of a couple that you are wondering, hmm, what were they thinking when putting them together? So, guys, uh, what do you think of this uh, of this one comic in particular? What 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 are your thoughts? I love the definition. What were they thinking? <laughs> I know it sounds very negative, but believe me, I have I, I well when I say me. First thoughts for that, but yeah, I'm sorry. No, no. The, the the truth is that uh, this is my favorite of the Friends Forever to date, uh, mainly because it is a it is a pairing, a partnership that no one really expected. Rarity and Babs have hardly even spoken to one another, <laughs> and so here they are sharing a comic, and yet they find this great common ground. Now that's not to say I don't criticize it for some elements, which we'll get into. But everything about this great contrast between polar opposite personalities is just fantastic. And in the light of uh, Bloom and Gloom, it is, uh, this comic is actually kind of prophetic. Yeah, you're right. Especially towards the end, where it kind of like hints towards uh, Bab's true talent with those hairstyles and all that. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. This is really interesting comic. Like, just reading through the whole thing... It's I I don't know how to describe it because you have the two most um out of left field combo like Rarity and Babs. I thought Granny Smith and the Flim Flam were strange, but this one okay. Um, besides from the show, they never talked, and on the comic series uh, that was uh, the what was what was it again? Um, the Manhattan Keep or something was it? Manhattan Mystery. Yeah, mystery something. Yeah, the main the Manhattan Mystery Diamond uh, yeah. story, and which the, was also uh, drawn by uh, by Agnes Garbowska. Yeah. And I yeah. don't even think that they even talk in that episode. Not not much, I guess. But yeah. no, because the the interaction between uh, was between Babs and Trixie, never with uh, between Rarity. Babs and, and and Rarity. I mean, so yeah, yeah. I I think they just said hello. But that's about it. Uh, other than that, I, I, I got no idea because I, I don't know how to think. Th- this is an interesting set piece. I do like where, how it ends and I do like the journey to the end. But James, what about you, man? I think this comic, more than any other, proves, uh, proves how ingenious the Friends Forever series is because they, they take two characters that they cannot be so, they cannot be more different. They cannot be more opposed in like complete different levels, and they manage to find something that they they they, they can agree on, and a way to connect. Um, it proves that actually friendship can arose from anywhere. But I will agree with uh, Silver when he says that there are a couple of rocky parts in the in the comic, and believe me, we're going to talk about those. Mm-hmm. But when it reaches the ending, it's the, the ending is where the payoff is. Um especially starting with the with uh, the scene where Rarity and uh, is talking with Sapphire Shores, which might be my favorite moment of the entire comic, next to the next to the do- roller derby. But mm-hmm. we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. So uh we're gonna talk about this comic right away. Guys, uh I think we talk about the comic long enough, but from now on, spoiler talk. So I hope you're ready. 
So we begin in uh, Sweet Evil's bedroom where she's sleeping, and she wakes up to um to an ear infection actually, which kind of confused me at first <laughs> because I mean, what kind of ear infection can actually make you lose balance? I had a couple of those, and I never had this problem. Well, it does affect the. I don't know what version of the infection she has, but it does affect her balance in the ear. So, well, I can buy it. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think it can make you a little feel a little dizzy. I'm still just trying to get over her reaction of nyar. Nyar? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh nyar. Yep. <laughs> can I? I want to have. Uh, I I want to have Claire Corlett do that in her voice. <laughs> Oh, by the way, here is the part where we see the dolls, the spike doll that we've been talking about for so long. Yes, the shipping, the shipping wars continue. Yep. <laughs> and uh, Rarity uh, knows the, about the, it. The, the spike doll that kind of looks an awful lot like the uh, Build a Bear doll that they sell. The mm. spike Build a Bear doll. Merchandising, merchandising. <laughs> no, it, it is a cute touch, I think. I think it's very cute. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, I don't know, plushies and dolls and all that. It's kind of like, it's a, it's, it's a part of childhood. And I like that, that Sweet Evil still sleeps with, uh, with her. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> in comes Rarity, uh, wearing an attire that should be stolen from, uh, Sito Elsa Kaiba. from Frozen. <laughs> well, she kind of looks like, that, 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 that Kate says Elsa to me. It might say Seto Kaiba's bothers. No, I, I think it's like Seto and he just, with the pose, like, haha, prepare for my dragons. Actually, I say it as, uh, I'll, I'll recolor Princess Platinum's get up. <laughs> really now? <laughs> yeah, well, the color uh, says that. Yeah, it looks very Princess Platinum y. Hmm. Princess Platinum y, but, but mostly it's just rarity in full drama mode. <laughs> so true, so true. Although now that you have said the Seto Kaiba thing, I cannot help but read the dialogue with with his voice. <laughs> Doctor, won't you tell me what has become of my poor sister? <laughs> Mokoba, speak to me. Well, <laughs> <Balmazar>! sir. <laughs> God damn it, Norman. You ruined everything. <laughs> Yay. Okay, now I'm also having pictures. It's like, hi, sis. Shut up, sweetie, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sis, can I read in the balloon? Shut up, sweetie Belle. <laughs> Screw the rules. I have gemstones. <laughs> she does. <laughs> hmm. How come the Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge references seeped from your review into this one? Silver, what did you do? <laughs> what? I think the shorter answer is, what haven't I done? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, well. Uh, if we can get through this one in one piece. Uh... <laughs> No, no, no! Shut up, Norman. Uh, we are uh, so. Rarity is obviously kind of like worried, as worried about her sister as she is worried if she is going to be contagious or not. Hmm. Which I love the deadpan answer from the doctor, especially his face. No, I love. I love how the characters are drawn in this style. I love Agnes Garposka's artwork. It's, it's just so. It's so lovely, and. Right, is kind of like, oh, I'm sorry that you cannot come with me to main to uh, main hat, and you were looking forward to that and that, and it's like, this is this this next pages are very heavy on the exposition. You just mm-hmm. look at the size of those bubbles, and you're like, oh yeah. Well, they do need to explain certain situations, like why was she excited and what she was going to do and stuff, because it gets that out of the way for us to get the, to the point where, oh, this is what. They were planning, but since Sweetie Bell's not here, they have to do Plan B. When we do get to uh, Manhattan, and it's time for Babs and Rarity to uh, meet, kind of for the first time, but not. Mm-hmm. Uh, this came up at uh, a panel at BabsCon. Someone's asking, well, aren't they trying to fill in ex- exposition for people who might not have seen the episode or read those particular comics? Which okay, that's a fair that's a fair question and a fair point, but I will maintain that I no no one walks up to a friend and summarizes their life experience. Nobody talks like that. I think we brought it up in one of our reviews when we said the death of your story starts with the words as you know. <laughs> but I, I thought that came up when we were talking about how monotone Twilight was in the last comic review. Oh, the Pinky and Twilight yeah. crossover. I. Okay, maybe I do need a little exposition on this because I we have talked about it. Whenever you say "as you know," 
it's the end of, it's the end days for your story <laughs> because you're basically looking at the audience and saying uh this is what you're supposed to know everybody got that <laughs> oh what this is this is the point of the story where uh everything stops dead on its tracks and addresses the audience directly yeah. and that is something that is uh that is very sloppy for for some for some writers although Sometimes there is no other way to go around it. Yeah. Or, or, or there are writers who actually have made a career about that. I mean, look at Christopher Nolan. When you think about it, all the writing in his, I just watched all of his movies in a single marathon. Wow. Uh, to build up for Interstellar. Mm -hmm. And every single one of his movies do this. But you don't notice because everything that the characters are talking about is just so damn interesting. Like, they, they talk about, well, you know, it, it's Christopher Nolan. You know what they may be talking about. But that is that is one thing. When what they are talking about is just summarizing what has happened in other books, even though you are doing it to put the audience up to speed so they don't have to read all the other issues, you are wasting time for whatever fun thing could happen in this comic. Yeah, but you also have to remember that certain people haven't read it. And I'm always in the opinion of every comic book that a person picks up is their first issue. Like, for, if a rando goes to a store and purchases this issue and he doesn't know, or he or she doesn't know what's the content, like, what, what is, what everything's like, maybe they just heard us talking about it, they pick it up and started reading it and don't know the characters and the motivations, this is a good way to explain things. But I do see a point where too much explaining gets the story really, really boring. Get on with it. Get on with it. Get on with it! <laughs> yes, get on with it! <laughs> uh, there we go. See, this this comic just begs for references. <laughs> it, it definitely does. It's impossible not to. So, when Rarity uh, starts dressing up the first pony that goes through the door, of course, we get revealed that it's actually Babs. <laughs> and right away, I love that. The, I love the way that Agnes Garboska draws uh, Babs. It is so absolutely adorable. Like, oh my god, how can you be so cute? I swear to Luna, you cannot be this adorable. This, it's impossible. You're creating a singularity of cuteness right here, Babs. Stop it. Want me to use the sound clip from before? Go ahead. You've got a time paradox. Ah, uh, three, two, one. I love her. So it's so cute. Haha. <laughs> how do you think about that? Oh my gosh. But anyway, uh, it's, uh, it is clear that Babs is there for a reason, and even though, well, they start summarizing continuity like we were mentioning, uh, right if you said very quickly that Babs is there because they were going to meet up with uh, her and Sweetiebel, and Sweetiebel is not nowhere to be seen. So Babs is like, oh, okay, I guess there is no point on me hanging out with you any, uh, anyway. And I love how Rarity doesn't, uh, doesn't come out like, if, if, uh, right away, and she's like, She's like, yeah, sure, we should hang out and all that. No, she's focused on her job, but she's like, oh, come on, you're here to do a job. Don't do... Oh, I can't help it. I think I can hang out with you. We can hang out together. And I like that. I like that. I like how Rarity is like, yeah, sure, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be around with you. That's, that's, that's something that we can do. I do, however, have to fault Sweetie Belle for not saying, oh, Babs was gonna show up. Really? I thought she did. She doesn't. No, she, she doesn't. She hints. She hints at it very vaguely, like this is a JRPG. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I have an issue with JRPG foreshadowing. <laughs> but um, but she doesn't flat out say, "Oh, Babs is gonna come over," and she, we were hoping to hang out together. I'm just like, what, why did you not say that? What? But then I think, oh, this is My Little Pony, where these ponies are not good communicators at all. <laughs> Oh, they don't have good email service in Equestria, apparently. <laughs> or any communication service at all. They definitely suck at telling people that, hey, we're going to be doing this, or we're going to be doing that. <laughs> uh, oh, well. But at least we got a scene where Rarity and Babs are hanging out. Yes. And Actually, we got several scenes. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, and this is this is something that starts very fun, it's very funny. Then it gets kind of like, eh. And towards the end of the 
a series, it's kind of like uh, oh yeah, no, uh, not really. Oh. Uh, I was actually, I was actually getting pretty. Yeah, I was actually getting pretty tired of the whole pampering, uh, pampering oh, scene. the pampering. Like, yeah, I like, I like the spa scene though. I think I could have reacted exactly like Babs when it came to the acupuncture. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. So first off, they go to the spa, getting their means done and acupuncture. Wow. No. no. Okay. Yeah, I mean acupuncture. Is anybody here familiar with Little Miss Rarity? Uh, no, 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 no. That's, that, 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 am I the only one thinking, wow, Rarity likes to get stabbed with little needles in her skin? In all honesty, acupuncture is a good relaxing method. In all honesty, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am reminded of that scene in season three, in the episode where Trixie takes over Ponyville and Rarity stabs accidentally with her needle. Something tells me that she liked that so much that she decided to get into acupuncture. Well, acupuncture? Oh, you know what? I'm not going to even defend acupuncture. No. <laughs> You're not. I know I'm not. <laughs> but I love that Babs is like, nope. <laughs> oh, they're going to stick them into your skin. It's very, nope. <laughs> yeah, she's got, she's relating to Cousin Macintosh. <laughs> hey, nope. But uh, straight from the spa, we go right into um into the hairdressers. <laughs> yeah, I was laughing my ass off with this scene. This guy. The, yeah, the the, the psychotic hair, uh, uh, hairdress pony is like, I have to cut this bang. Why do I hear a French accent out of him? Like the that fake French accent. I have to cut this bang. No wait, I surrender. Just yes, she's real still. This is the most important thing I've ever done. It sounded more, uh, it sounded Indian. more Indian than, uh. than, than French. <laughs> I have my accents mixed up. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, and of course things go awry. I like the fact that, uh, it's rated the one that saves, uh, <laughs> that, that saves Babs from the psychotic, uh, uh, hairdress pony and all that. And, William from the from the uh, uh, William from the hairdress into a clothes shop, and at this point, Babs's facial expression is pretty much mine. Yeah, she is one hundred and twenty percent done with this. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the big mistakes for people who hang out but don't really know each other. They, especially the leading host, which is Rarity, goes to places that she would want to, not the other person wants to go to. They don't have uh, interest in doing, well, what the other person wants to, or vice versa. Yeah, so this, if so this is eight pages out of the whole comic. Yeah, out of uh, how many pages is that? 24, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, more than 36%. Yeah, or, which is, no, don't, god damn it. We are three, not going six, to... 366, 366, 366, 366, 366, 366, 366, 366, 366, He's doing it, Norman, stop him. Okay, let me get my tranquilizer Before he fills dart. the screen with threes and sixes, stop it. Yeah, let me get my tranquilizer dart. But no, I mean, I do, understand. I do understand that setup is important, but the problem is, I, I know what you guys are thinking, it's a bit too long. I, I, yeah, I mean, by the, by the point of, you know what, it, the, the, the scene at the spa gets the point right away perfect. Mm-hmm. Is that Babs is not into this. Yeah. And you can very well put every single scene that they have in, uh, like the hairdress one, the, uh, oh, uh, in quick the, montages. The, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the hairdress one, the spa and the clothes one in two pages. You don't need eight pages. I mean, it's fine for the comedy and all that, but here the comedy is coming out of rarity. Babs is just in for the ride. Mm-hmm. So, she's yeah, a, she she's does, a hostage. Exactly. She doesn't have that much of an input. She's just there to get clothes on and to get intimidated by a creepy hairdress guy and to run away from needles. Yeah. I mean, it's it's funny. The faces are are fantastic, and the the artwork is lovely. So it's not it's not hard to look at. You can actually get through it very well. But mm-hmm. mm, when it comes to writing, it kind of feels like a bit of waste. I I can see your point. I can see your point. But like you guys said, it's the whole we need to 
uh, they need to explain things or be then rather than showing? Well, I'm not sure. What would you think, Silver? Do you think it's too much exposition? No, it's not too much exposition, just this, uh, we're, we are seeing it happen. We're seeing it unfold. It's just that we don't, if it's all on rarity, Babs is so silent. It's not until the next page mm-hmm. where Babs gets rid of, <laughs> puffs away the hat, which is pretty adorable. We're yeah, back yeah. to, we're back to dog territory. It's when she says that she doesn't really get along with her family because they don't understand so well. Then the last eight pages make more sense, but you're like, wow, you needed eight pages to establish this? It's uh, too much. It's uh, too much. I don't know. I mean, family, family is a tough issue to handle. Yeah, but sometimes you really don't need that. Sometimes you really don't. You, you, you get the point home, you get the point across very clearly is that, okay, Rarity and Babs, they don't have common tastes when it comes to, uh, when it comes to rarity, liking, freely, CC girly stuff. Okay, fine, we get it. Yeah, in that case, in case you didn't get it, here's another page. Uh, you guys really need to get that rarity and Babs don't, don't, don't get along with, with stuff that rarity likes. Yeah, yeah, okay, we get it. But, and again, and again, and an eighth time, and you are like, can we please move on to our next scene? And well, thankfully, that's, that's the part of the comic where, where, the comic goes, okay, yeah, let's move to a different, a completely different scene. I, I think it's a setup where Rarity and Babs are trying to connect, and probably one of the few things that Rarity likes, uh, Babs will like. Who knows? Like maybe Babs like the spa, or maybe she finds cutting her hair or mane would be awesome, or even dress shopping probably. But it, you, what you say is true. It, eight pages is a bit too long. Minimum, I will give it five. I'm not sure about silver, but don't get me wrong. I am not saying that those pages are bad. Mm-hmm. Are, Same here. I'm saying that it's, it's kind of like we don't need that many. Yeah, there's a difference between quality and purpose, and they are all of high quality in my eyes. They, you know, they have funny moments, mm-hmm. but I question the purpose they serve. And the purpose is that they drive the point home by the second page, but eh, because it it doesn't it, it's it doesn't detract from the enjoyment of the comic, um, especially because of the next scene. And this is the part of the comic that I actually enjoy the most. Um, I, I well, I enjoy this whole third act completely, but this is the part that I like the most because what a great character Sapphire Shores is. You could say that she's sensational. Oh, well, We're just gonna to... let that hang awkwardly for a moment. Oh, yeah, boo, send by it. Yeah. No, sh- shut up, Norman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, if you were to judge Sapphire Shores from her generation, from her, uh, season one, uh, persona, she wasn't that much of a character, but then season four happened. And they portrayed her in such a cool, fun, interesting way. And this comic did even more than that. It's like how good it is that they have they have singers and celebrities that have insightful, good and 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 useful advice. Well, James, we do have it in real life too, but not many. I'm struggling to <laughs> think of one. Chris Pratt. I'm not sure about that. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say so. Like, I mean, put it on the same level as uh, Sapphire Shores. Oof. Not actor. I mean celebrity. Um. <laughs> okay. I mean. Wait, celebrities? Like, okay, I'm not going to go into definition. No, 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 no. Yes, compared to all the other pop idols that we have. All, all the pop singers that we have. Uh, no. I got no idea. Dude, dude, dude Silver put it in his review better than anyone ever could. <laughs> we Equestrian ponies get uh, celebrities who are intelligent, insightful, and sympathetic. We get Justin Bieber. <laughs> oh. Exactly. Oh. That, you see... That is the problem with this world, <laughs> is that our celebrities are, are, uh, for the most part, questionable. Bit jerk, bit, yeah, bit jerkish. Mm-hmm. But Suffer Shores is really good, and I like how she actually puts it that, um, uh, R- Rarity is still talking about Babs and, uh, obsessing over Babs, because uh, the way that Babs is acting struck a chord with, uh, with Rarity. Um, because, she also was misunderstood and but by her own family, and she sees herself into the way that Babs behaves. 
And that's great because Suffer Shore leaves, leaves the question hanging in the air, leaves it up to Rarity to make up for it, and she indeed does. Uh, so she buys a couple of tickets to the roller derby, and this time it's Bob's the one taking Rarity to it. And this is, this is a very fun part, I have to say. Oh yes, this is, this is very fun. The, that whole eight page waiting game took on new meaning when, when they went to this roller derby. Which, yeah. well, actually, I should count out, just in the interest of fairness, how many pages did the roller derby last? Let's see, one, two, three, four, oh, three. Okay, so yeah, d- disproportionate, but this is a sign what you can condense into just three pages has more weight than eight, and turns the uh, comic around for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, mean, it, I mean, going into this roller derby, I thought, oh, this has been kind of fun, but they really took too long, but then... I read the roller derby part, and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, it was unexpected. It was really good. Like, the roller derby scene, the whole storytelling between Babs and uh, Rarity here. Like, Rarity is in the camp of, I don't get this. And Bab is like, oh yeah! And the Kool-Aid man comes through the through the ceiling. Oh, they wish. <laughs> Here comes the Kool-Aid man, going to save the day. <laughs> But I was also shocked at the roller derby thing until um I actually was was still trying to figure out why is there a roller derby going on like this is very badass I have to say this is really cool I I wasn't expecting ponies to work so well with uh with the scenario of a roller derby hey, James you forgot the episode where Rainbowdash was helping uh, Apple Bloom search for Cutie Mark there was a absolutely really yeah. Thing. I- I totally forgot that episode. I absolutely forgot about that episode. Yeah. But then I realized I, that wow, ponies do have roller derbies yeah. in the in their in, in their universe. That's so cool. Yeah, I'd forgotten that as well. I uh I was lucky to rem- to find out about it again. <laughs> so I just so ponies like to pummel each other. That's all there is to it. Yeah, why not? Yeah. You can get all, you can get all cutesy all you want, but they can still take you to the take you to the laundromat. Yeah, there's also so, wrestling, professional wrestling. No, no, oh, we're that, gonna, that, we're that's gonna talk the, about that soon. Oh. Yeah. Besides, that's designed to not hurt anyone. Ideally, but wrestling. No, I didn't know you were a big wrestling fan. I like it. Oh, there you go. But no, uh, this this one, as much as Rarity doesn't really get into it, she's offering. A good outsider's perspective. I, I I love that she's not simply going on and on about their fashion choices. <laughs> True that. Because yeah, sometimes Rarity gets too flanderized. She gets too focused on the uh, on the let's talk about the fashion of the character instead of um let's talk about what's going on here. I, I also think that she also commented on the naming conventions of the ponies. Yeah. <laughs> And Shining Harmer. <laughs> yeah. Let's That's please so let's talk about. Can we talk about Shining Harmer for like the next the, the next five days? Because <laughs> I I cannot have enough about this tiny visual gag that I totally want to believe <laughs> it's Princess Cadence in disguise as an Earth pony. <laughs> oh yeah, it looks exactly like Cadence. The name is the name is a pun on her husband, Shining Armor, Shining Harmer, oh. and. She has the same color scheme, the same tail style, the same everything. She even kind of has the same eye color, oh, if yeah. not the same eye color. So I am like, this is so cool. New head cannon, Cadence gets uh, gets her adrenaline rush by playing Pony Roller Derby. But it also seems that there's another princess in the shot too. Snow Pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just have to let her go. She embodies the pain and the suffering of all the people that had to get through Frozen. <laughs> and those who had to put up with the song during the holidays. Oh, the... Every single department store that I went through had to let it go. Really? <laughs> no joke. Seriously. Wow. Oh. Do you want to hold a derby? <laughs> Come on, let's lose some tea. <laughs> I like Frozen all right, but I will be the first one to... Uh, Agree that the song is overplayed beyond belief. Yeah, I think you just have to let it go, James. Well, shut up, Norman, before I shank you in the neck. <laughs> Welcome to the MBS show, where we threaten bodily harm at least one episode. I'm going to throw you in front of the roller derby guys, so they can run over you. Let's see how you survive that. Ouch. Uh, yeah, har- harsh bra. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
So what happens after that, the roller derby? Well, apparently Norman goes into therapy for James's threats, and we all take one big step back. Oh, you mean the comic? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, we get we get to meet Shadow Smack. Although I was always I thought earlier in the comic her name was plural. Sna- Shadow Smacks. Yeah, first it's Shadow Smacks, then it's Shadow Smack. <laughs> so that wasn't that wasn't me getting a typo. That was the comic. I'm mm. I, I'm above reproach. Yes, You're totally. Right. Yes, if all my jokes on the NBS show have proven anything. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so she so Babs gets to meet her hero heroine. <laughs> Who, uh, who gets to show off her own hairdo, once again making this kind of prophetic for bloom and gloom. Yeah. Hmm. Especially with that final dialogue that, uh, that Babs has with Rarity. Like, like, do you think I could do that thing uh, with my hair? Do you think there are <laughs> other haircuts that cool under those helmets? Oh, wow. Really? Something like that? Yes. Yeah, no, that, yeah. it's literally, I just read it verbatim from the, from the page. That is how it's put. Something tells me that the writers on the show and the writers on the comic were kind of like in cahoots and decided to hint, hint, nudge, nudge at it. Well, you have to remember, James, the writers for the comics and the writers, sorry, the writers for the comic get access to scripts for season five, so they know what's going on. So I do like how one and the other work together to make it seem so seamless. Though, uh, 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 before we go any further and before we, uh, we finish the, the, the review of the comic, May I bring your attention to panels one and two of page twenty-three? Panels one and two, page twenty-three. All right. Yes, yes. Look at how absolutely adorable Babs is. <laughs> like first going, uh, how about, how about, how about, and then hugging the autograph with hearts coming out of her face, and I'm like, you're so happy, you're so cute. <laughs> it's so cute. I love it. One day we will get you to do a full-on squee, James. I'm sure of it. Yes. <laughs> and I will record I, it. I could, I could, I could do a full on squee. I can totally do that, but only when it's actually worth it. Yes. Until then, heart of steel. <laughs> heart of steel. Heart. Believe in the heart of the cards of steel. <laughs> oh no, let's not, let's not go there again. <laughs> heart of the cards? More like heart of my ass. I don't want to believe in that. Hmm. You're gonna be banished to the shadow realm. Purple realm. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, the comic ends with um with Rarity learning a lesson about uh well, uh, the, oh, I, well how will you put this one? I just walk into it and I didn't know how to word it. That uh, it's uh, it's hard. To, oh, here it is. It's hard to put aside the things you want to do and ask what your friends are interested in. But if you never ask, you may never know how uh, amazing your friends can be. Mm-hmm. That is that is something that you can also apply to to episodes like Castle Sweet Castle, when you try to solve a situation by seeing it from your perspective instead of your friend's perspective. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I understand. Uh, I understand. I'm picking up what you're throwing down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, square. So, mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> But yeah, the the comic ends with uh, right learning a, a valuable lesson. They make a very cool cape for Babs that is called ba- Bad Seed. <laughs> uh, nice, nice reference to that one episode that I have to know why you don't want to talk about Silver. <laughs> oh, the that episode it tried to tackle the complex topic of bullying, but unfortunately relied on oversimplification and. Uh, just some bad characterization moments. It was not a strong introduction for Babs. In fact, there is a, I, I can't find the video right away, but there's a fellow on YouTube who very, who stated his case against it very, uh, eloquently and said, I'm not letting my daughter watch this show because of this, because of messages like this. And I thought, Ooh. you know what? Good, good on you, man. I'm, I'm sorry that you saw the show at one of its weaker moments and that it leaves that impression, but Proactive father, here, here. Just be proactive in your kids' uh, entertainment. Yeah, make sure that they don't get the wrong idea out of the episode. True that, true that. His daughter's not going to watch the show at all. Unfortunate, but hey, small price. Yeah, maybe of season course, five gets us better. Well, she, like I say, she's not going to see season five. Uh, boo. Not boo in the sense that, you know, I, I really am proud to hear that, you know, a parent, so many people want to blame entertainment rather than being proactive in how what they expose their kids to. I've seen yeah. adu- adults bringing children to 
beat them up, shoot them up games that are like way underage. Yep, I've seen that too. Oh yeah, those all those fourteen and thirteen year olds playing Call of Duty and insulting everyone left and right. Wait, I thought those games were meant for them. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Pokemon. Pokemon is the uh, hard stuff, man. Oh, jeez. Well, well, it does get kids started on uh, pit fighting, apparently. <laughs> Are you sure it's not more to combat? Oh yeah. Well, that one, that one, apparently, you just uh, you know decapitate your spouse for as a lover's fat. <laughs> uh, we are off the rails. Not off not- the rails. Well, not necessarily, but yes, the comic is... Okay, we have reached the end of the comic. So, guys, what are your thoughts on it? Like, final thoughts? Well, just that it still remains my favorite Friends Forever to date. It's fun, it's lighthearted, it offers a a pairing of characters who work really well off each other, but you wouldn't expect it. And it shows if you give enough time for these characters to act like themselves, you know, Rarity's not suffering from the flanderization she has in other issues. Uh, you can make a really great story. And that's a testament to both the show and its characters, the comic and its portrayal, and uh, the fans who can see that say, yeah, this looks and feels like they would in the show. While still having a a style of its own, I think that that goes to Agnes Garbowska. She's able to draw it on her own style while also um, keeping it reminiscent to the TV show. I think it's because her faces don't go... As exaggerated as the, as the faces that Andy Price draws, like I'm not trying to to trash on Andy Price, but if, if you know what I mean, yeah, understandable. Yeah, they the cartoonish look works great for Andy Price. I love his artwork, but it's sometimes like, wow, good luck seeing that in the show. <laughs> well, we did see some in last week's um, review. Well, that, that's a different kind of terror, but just watch, <laughs> just watch Pinkie Pie eating a Wendigo chili pepper. Aha, yes, and, you'll never see that. So, yeah, we'll never see those expressions, or if we do, God well, help us all. We, we kind of, sort of saw an under the, the top of version of it with, the, yeah, exactly, you read mm. my mind with the, the rainbow leaking in, uh, well, that was in season, season one. one. Oh god, that came out so wrong, <laughs> rainbow leaking. Ah, uh, never mind, we were making final thoughts. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Sil- Silver, you were going, you were going with a chain of thought there. Oh, I've, I've completed the chain of thought. Now all I can think of is, wow, awkward. Yep, yep. But anyway, my <laughs> point of view. Yes, my point of view. I, I like, I like it. I like it. I like this a lot. <laughs> it's impossible for me not to relate to this comic. I mean, like, any, uh, any brony could relate to this story because it's very much what we go through. The whole family not, not understanding it, friends not getting it. Um, and kind of like finding that common, uh, that common ground with other people that makes, um, brings the community together. The, the reason why Bronies hang out together is because we have this common interest. And if it wasn't for it, we wouldn't be friends. Uh, I like, I like the fact that even though the pampering scene goes on for a while, I love the fact that there is a lot of interaction between Rarity and Babs. That this is a, a full-on Friends Forever comic, where the two characters are talking and interacting with each other. Uh, not so much like other Friends Forever comics, where they might be separated or the interaction between them is not really present. We're going to see that in number 14, I can tell you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's, it, is, it is a celebration of every single character involved in this comic. Like, Rarity is great, Babs is great, Sapphire Shores is unbelievable, and Sweetable is just a lot of fun. Hell, even, even Shadow Max is uh, fantastic in what uh, little development she has. And she has like one page. Hmm. In, in one page, she's presented as a very likable character, so yeah. It's um, it is a great comic. It's it's on my top three, perhaps even my top two. I I don't like it more than my uh, uh than than my number one. That will be the 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 friends forever with Rainbow Dash and Speedfire, but it is very close to it. And then again, best best horse is best horse because <laughs> rarity. All right, and I can't help it. His so, unbiased yeah. opinion. <laughs> oh, I I am completely neutral and objective about it because everybody knows that opinions are objective. Uh, <laughs> so rarity is best pony because because rarity and 
Rarity, rarity, ra, ra, ra. Anyway. Oh, by the way, guys, by the dozen issue here, uh, I need to ask, out of all 12 issues here, who here has the most time spent together? Like, all 12 issues, who do you think has the most time spent together? Most time together? I actually say Spike and Princess Celestia. Really? That was, yeah, that was going to be my answer, too. Hmm. Yeah, because they spent together from basically page one, where Spy goes to visit Celestia, and they don't get separated until the end, where uh, Spy goes to celebrate uh, Twilight's birthday to give her the the telescope. Hmm. Okay, I'm I'm looking through things, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. In other in other comics, you have like Rainbow Dash and Trixie take a while to get together. Same goes with with Twilight and Shining Armor. We do have Applejack and Rarity. They do spend a lot of time together. Oh, but it takes them like two pages until they get together. Spike and, Ra- Spike and Celestia are kind of like together from page one. Mm. Yeah. But they don't get to go to Winnie Land! Winnie Land! <laughs> Winnie Land! <laughs> but, Eddie, but I'd say, yeah, Spike and Celestia have the most together time in... Theirs is also one of my favorites for this mm, uh, yeah. for this series. Mm-hmm, I do mm-hmm. remember that. That that one's awesome. Ooh, yeah. Although, but then as as James says, we're gonna see a a spike with the other half of the royal sisters, and it it, it has a Ooh. mixed mixed bag. Mm-hmm. I do. Okay, I, I think we're done with number thirteen and uh, number fourteen. I do like it a bit, but not for the things that I should like it for. But that's a story for another day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because, yeah, we, we, I, I'd be very happy to talk about um, number 14, but uh, n- next week you guys are going to be in for a treat because we're going to put the Friends Forever comics to a side. We're going to put the uh, the TV show to a side as well because we're going to focus on the Finshipies Magic comics. We are going to start talking about My Little Pony, Finship is Magic, the five-issue series that was released all over April that focuses on five villains, King Sombra, T-Rex, The Silence, Nightmare Moon, and Queen Chrysalis. And we're going to start talking about them, and I hope you guys are looking forward to that. I definitely am looking forward to it a lot. Mm-hmm. Because this this is going to be an interesting series to talk about. I have so many good and bad things to say about this yep. that it's going to be fun. This is the comic that let us know some of the backstories to our favorite villains. Or just has them doing stuff. It depends. Yeah, 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 true. Or has them being whiny teenage jerks. <laughs> depends, uh, depends, all depends. It depends. Are you talking about the siren? <laughs> See, oh, they become teenagers. Dude, dude believe me. <laughs> You have you, you you have no idea how much of a roller coaster these uh, these uh, reviews are going to be. Mm. We are going to have fun. Yes, and then we'll let it go. <laughs> ah, <laughs> killed you! Come here. I can't. The Atlantic's in the way, and the, uh-huh. and the Pacific. <laughs> but James, don't you want to build a snowman with silver, Norman? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, high five, Silva. High five. <laughs> Screw you guys, I'm going home. Uh, but before that, take us out. Uh, what am I going to do with the both of you? Maybe I'll murder you after this review is over. Oh, hey, it's over. Where are my knives? <laughs> uh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you so much for checking this out, for listening to us, for following us. Uh, we hope to see you all next time. This has been James Cork. And I am Roman Sanzo. And I am about to die again from my co What? No, don't die. No, wait a minute. Then you all... They're gonna, they're gonna <laughs> let me go from the show. No, I, I'm still <laughs> keeping you. Can't stand oh. his jokes anymore. Let him go. <laughs> let him go. <laughs> Only when Gotha Vishinashish, you will have my permission to die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, uh, have a good one, everybody. Bye. Bye bye. Adios. That's it. I'm gonna take that sound box and I'm gonna shove it down Norman's throat and then. <laughs>